Hi everybody, it's Daphne and you're very welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for coming to spend some time with me today. I really appreciate it. I'm in my very casual clothes today and this is a slightly different kind of video because I want to talk about how we can stay positive during this COVID-19 pandemic um, and worldwide um, happening crisis whatever way you want to call it, whatever you want to call it that we are all united in this and i suppose there's comfort in that it's a very unusual situation um one that i don't think any of us have experienced before on this level um there have been of course epidemics and pandemic is the worldwide so um we are united in that and i think everybody is feeling the same things we're all uncertain and uncertainty leads to fear and fear leads to I think kind of changed behavior um, but I think we need to focus on the positives and that's really what I wanted to talk about today is how we can stay positive and stay sane because lots of us are going to be at home you know staying at home in close quarters with our families and yes we do see them on a regular basis but we are not usually in a situation where we can't go out as such. Everybody is in the same boat we are all staying in as much as possible we obviously go to the supermarket or go to the chemist but as much as possible we don't go out we go for walks with the dog and I have my little oh my little pal here you're going to turn around and say hello. Say hello, Elfie. <laughs> she comes with me when I'm making videos and she just snuggles up there beside me. So I just thought we'd focus on some very positive things that I think we can do. And these are not new ideas. People, I've heard people saying these things already, but a few different things. Um, I think a lot of people can focus on the negative. It's very easy to get caught up in that because, you know, if you have the news on all the time um, because you want the latest updates and you want to hear, you know, what what are the numbers today and, um, you know, how quickly is it spreading and what percentages and so on. And yes, you can get really caught up in that. And I know I did over the first few days. Now I'm not listening to the news as much. I'll pick it up in the evening, maybe the six o'clock news or the nine o'clock news, and that's when we get the numbers updated. We get a, um, an update from the Department of Health. So um, trying not to listen to the news too much and try and listen to more music and topical debates and things. Um, and we, I think we need to focus on the fact that the majority of people will be okay. Um, they, they do say that if you get it, and particularly if you're not in a vulnerable group, um, hopefully the symptoms are mild enough, like, like a bad flu, which if anybody's actually had the flu, it's not that pleasant anyway. Um, so you would feel quite unwell, but probably most people would be okay. It's the vulnerable people in society that we really need to protect. That is the, you know, the elderly people and people with underlying health conditions. And it really is so important for us as responsible citizens to make sure that we stop this. We're the soldiers. We're not working in the, on the front lines in the hospitals, but we're the soldiers that are going to make the difference. If we stay home today, it makes a difference tomorrow. Um, so I think one of the most important things you can do is have a good routine. Um, and I know we're, we've been, the kids have been off school about 10 days now. So they finished on a Thursday. So from the Friday a week ago, they were all at home from school and college. And, um, you know, you kind of think initially it's like a holiday, but it's not because this will, this will end and we'll be told schools will be open next week or whatever, you know, and, and hopefully in, not too, not in the not too distant future. And we will be back to normal. And if we've let our routines go, we're going to find it very difficult to get back, back to normal. I think particularly with, ki with kids, because I know over Christmas and summer and, you know, longer holidays where my kids would stay up later and get up later, that I have to start pulling the bedtimes back as it's coming up to school opening time again. And it's quite difficult and they will sometimes they won't do it. And then on the first day of school, they are I'm literally pulling them out of their beds and they're exhausted <laughs> for the first day or two. 
So I think keeping a regular routine, whether that's the old routine that you would have always had that you get up at, you know, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, whatever time, and you have your breakfast and you get dressed and whatever, you know, all the things that you would normally do, or that you start a new routine, which is kind of what I have done because I have a little confession to make. I really enjoy my sleep, really, really enjoy my sleep. I am trying, I allowed myself last week to sort of indulge. And now this week I am starting to get up earlier and just start my day, you know, at an early, a better time. So to get up, get dressed, whether it's in casuals like I have on now, um, I'm in sort of workout leggings and just a hoodie. Um, because, you know, you're in the house and you want to be comfortable. So kind of sometimes dressing up is fun <laughs> and it makes you feel good. And other times you just need your comfy clothes. So whatever gets you motivated. So get up, get dressed, get going. Put on your makeup because I think that, well, if you do wear makeup and I think if you watch any of these channels, you probably do. And um, that really makes a difference to me. I feel much better when I have even the smallest amount if I do my brows and my lashes and a little bit of lip gloss then I feel much better about myself. I actually don't have much on me today, a little bit of stick foundation, very little, just blend it in and um, some bronzer. Did I even put blush on? And I always do my eyes. I have nothing on my lids, just on uh, liner and my brows and mascara and a, a tinted lip balm. And it just makes me feel I have more purpose in my day. I am, I haven't been good at doing this, but this is my aim for this week, is to eat healthily because if you were, if you've been watching me for a while, you will know that last year I did the 5-2 diet and I lost 18 pounds. You may think you don't need to lose weight because I don't really look at here, but it's all around my tummy. And that's where I had put it on before. So I had lost it all. And then I stopped the routine of the 5-2 and I piled the weight back on. So now I'm hoping that this little, little um, spate of time is going to be like, I'm going into like a cocoon and when I come, when this is all over and I come out at the end, I'm going to have lost the weight again because I want to eat healthily. And the next thing I wanted to talk about is to get more, act, being more active. I, mm, I'm not good at being active. I'm really not. My older kids are really good at being active and being fit. And I want to try and establish a better um, fitness regime. Not, nothing too, <laughs> nothing too exhausting, nothing too difficult, but you know, going for power walks, not just walking the dog, because those of you who have dogs will know that sometimes your walk with a dog is not a power walk. You're stopping because they have to sniff everything and stop every so often. So, um, and actually, if they're like my little dog here, she doesn't like going for walks and she knows the routes. And if we get, once we get to the halfway point, she's happy and she'll start to walk ahead of me. But up to the halfway point, she's constantly looking behind. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why. And if you say the word, walkies she'll run away <laughs> um if any of you have had dogs that have done that i really appreciate the tips because i don't know i feel really cruel taking her out but once she's going she's okay but she knows the route as i say and halfway point she starts to yes i know we're going home anyway so you know getting out for a walk that it doesn't involve the dog so i can actually get my heart rate going i do have some notes here so um but you don't have to go out and walk. It could be yoga. It, there's lots of online um, exercises and I see more and more people are putting online uh, routines that you can easily do in your home. Another thing is get out into the garden. It's a good time of the year. Now we are still chilly enough here, but I know in other areas you have warmer weather and embrace that. We had a beautiful day up to now. It was really sunny. It was still a bit chilly, but it was nice and sunny. So, you know, get out, do the garden, do all the preparations that you often, well, I do every year say, I must do this before the summer. I want to paint the pots. I want to get new garden furniture. I want to repaint the garden, whatever. And then the summer comes and I've never had the time. Now I have the time. Um, you know, planting seeds, doing the pots in the garden, putting new plants down, cutting the lawn, whatever, painting things and making it pretty. Um, and then of course, when the summer comes, everything is done and it's time to party. Staying in touch with people is really, really important, um, particularly with older relatives. And you can do that by simply texting or a telephone call, but you can also Skype, FaceTime or WhatsApp call so that they can actually see you and you can see them. And that kind of contact, I think, is really, really important. We do it with, with my mother-in-law, 
sadly my parents are no longer with me um but i know if they were that's what i would be doing because i would be missing them terribly i do miss them terribly um you could always go back to the old-fashioned way and write letters and then people can keep them and have them as you know i suppose as almost a diary a social diary um of what's been happening and that also would tie in with keeping a diary because there, people are being encouraged to do so because this is a social history. Um, one of the things I've been doing is baking more. Just simple re recipes, things that I know my family love, loaf cakes, oatmeal cookies, things like that. And I have to say they've been disappearing very quickly. I've also been cooking m different recipes. I've been challenging myself so that to keep things interesting and that every day so what's for dinner and I've found some really nice recipes to to use from some of my books but also you know some of my cookery books but also from online self-care so so important so taking time for yourself so that you do feel you're recharging your own batteries be it through meditation prayer do, having a little spa day um, giving yourself a home manicure home pedicure um, hair masks, face masks, anything like that. The next thing is really important, get to bed at a reasonable time because again, I am really guilty of this. I am inclined to stay up too late, whether it's up late watching TV, which I don't tend to do too much, but I do stay up late reading. I'll get stuck into my book and I can't put it down and it could be one o'clock, half one before I put the book down and then I'm exhausted in the morning and I have to sleep later, so I have to stop that. So go to bed and go to sleep at a good time. Like it's your circadian rhythm, I think it's called. You really need to keep that at, at, in its normal routine. Watch old movies, anything that gives you a connection and a sense of, um, you know, connection to your past and a sense of uh, safety and comfort. I love that. Um, start a new series on Netflix. Play music, get up and dance. And the other thing I was going to talk about was books. And I'm going to do a separate video on that because I have I have so many recommendations. So thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.